Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I know we're reaching people around the world. Um, it is, uh, I am Stephanie Barish and I am the CEO of Indicate. And it is my pleasure to introduce you and welcome you to this Jamming the Curve event. The, today we are celebrating all of the creators, the organizers um, who have put together this incredible Jamming the Curve adventure that we have um, started and continue to be on. And we have the great pleasure of announcing the winners of the Game Jam. So back in spring, when we got locked in, Janet Murray of Georgia Tech reached out to Celia and myself, my colleague, and started talking about what a wonderful opportunity it was for games and to use games as a way to help express all the complicated data and internet was bombarding around COVID-19. She was, she really brought such an important point that we all could see was that not everybody really knows how to look at all of that information and how, and games are so wonderful at reaching people in, in ways that people understand. Um, I think we were having some technical difficulties on Stephanie's part. You know, I think she was doing a great intro, but I can try and uh, fill in from there. My name is Rick, by the way, and I'm joined uh, by Anne, and we both work for the National Academy of Sciences, one of the uh, organizers for Jamming the Curve. So, you know, just to finish off what Stephanie was saying is that, you know, there were a number of people already interested in finding ways to convey you know, this complex information and doing so in a way that, you know, sort of inspired action or, you know, motivated people rather than continuing to overwhelm and swamp us with everything. So uh, the team at Georgia Tech and, and Indicade were really excited to be designing, uh, you know, a game jam around COVID. And then when uh, our team at the National Academy of Sciences heard about it, we thought like, oh, this is a great opportunity and something that we thought we could really add uh, you know, a real contribution to. So we are very, very excited to be doing so. And you know, the, the past several weeks have been a lot of work by everyone, all of the developers and everyone backstage to do it. So really excited to share with you, not just you know, all the hard work everybody's done, but you know, celebrate the winners as Stephanie mentioned. Um, I, I do want to briefly introduce, you know, what exactly is the National Academy of Sciences, and if you can see on our screen what the heck Lab X is, because that <laughs> is here. And I'm going to actually pass it along to Anne to do a, a brief introduction. Yeah, because it's sort of the hierarchy of the National Academy of Sciences and then Lab X and how that all makes sense together. And we never assume that anybody has any idea what the National Academy of Sciences is. Not that you should, uh, but Rick and I feel like it's our job to kind of pass that along a little bit. So the National Academy of Sciences is a private nonprofit institution in Washington, D.C. And of course, when you say national and Washington, D.C., there is this sort of immediate knee jerk reaction to think we are part of the the federal government, but we're not. Um, but Abraham Lincoln, 150 odd years ago, had this great idea that there should be this institution that sat outside the framework of the federal government that would convene experts in science, engineering, and medicine who would be able to speak truth to power, to give good advice to the nation so that good policy could be formed using that expertise. So 150 odd years later, we're still doing that. And of course, at a time like this, um, a, in a national crisis, an international crisis, that kind of advice is especially useful. We've been giving good advice to the nation in a lot of different ways. So if you've been to a national park, because even now we can get out to spaces like that, 
that's because the academy said that we should set aside federal land for the use of all citizens. So, you know, you're welcome. Um, and, and if I remember when we could get on airplanes freely and travel the friendly skies and, and you did that without people lighting up Mad Men style beside you and smoking cigarettes. And again, you're welcome because the academy said that secondhand smoke thing in a little tube in the sky. Yeah, that's a real thing. And you shouldn't do that again. You're welcome. And maybe you did not know, but there was a reading war, phonics, whole language, and we solved the reading war because you're welcome. It is neither. It is both. And, and if you or someone you know is a chimpanzee and we are no longer using you for animal research, namaste, you're welcome. And so the Academy does all kinds of things like that. And we were really built for times like this. So we've been super busy thinking about the ways in which the nation can respond to a crisis such as this. And that's a lot of what we've been doing. But you can imagine this is a very specialized audience that is using the resources of the Academy. So it's a program like LabX for which Rick specifically works. And we think about how we take those resources and make them more broadly available to audiences that mightn't reach us through the 400 page reports that we do. And so Rick works for LabX, um, a program in my creative engagement portfolio. And so Rick, you should talk a little bit about what LabX is and does and how you do that work. It'd be my pleasure. Yeah, so you know, within the National Academies rests LabX, which is a creative engagement program. And you know, we're a small but very mighty group of individuals who essentially have the privilege of you know, taking that that science that the academies is working hard to, you know, compile and build consensus around. And we sort of repackage it in ways that are, you know, both really engaging for different audiences, but, you know, maybe a little unorthodox as well. So, you know, instead of putting out, you know, as Anne mentioned, 400 page reports, we would do a trivia night or design a, a escape room around the concept. Uh, we've created other games as well, such as a disaster preparedness uh, role-playing game. And we actually just launched a storytelling a game show event called Hidden Expert. So we're sort of juggling all these different things, all with the idea of you know, trying to get uh, people connected to good science, but without necessarily having it be extremely science forward, but making sure it's engaging first and foremost. And then you know, if people walk away, you know, whether it's learning something or, or just having a good time, then we consider it a, a job well done. And so although I've only been with LabX for just under a year, I can honestly say that the Jam and the Curve, this game jam that we were part of, uh, was both the, the most interesting and most challenging project that I've personally worked on. And, you know, I'm just personally very honored to be here, you know, telling you about it and sharing with you, you know, like why we got involved and, and all the great work around it. Um, and, you know, clearly this is the topic that affects everybody. So we thought it would be a timely thing for us to get involved in. Yeah, and I think what's really interesting about this specific game jam is that, you know, there's been a lot of attention paid to the notion that it's really hard to convince people to protect themselves and to protect others during the pandemic. But it, it isn't essentially true that people are not inclined to protect other people. There's a lot of research that shows that, that people really are altruistic, that they want to help each other, that in a crisis, it is their immediate reaction to reach out and to help people. But the problem in a situation like this is that science is provisional. It's not settled, that there's a lot of ways that the science has been evolving, that we don't see an immediate answer to a pressing question that we have to learn as we go. It's the nature of science. And that, that we can't always connect an immediate action to an immediate consequence. I mean, if you went to a grocery store and you forgot to wear your mask and you passed by somebody and they immediately fell over uh, because they got sick, I think you'd be a lot more inclined to wear your mask the next time that you went to the grocery store because you'd realize that you harmed somebody, you hurt somebody, and you would feel really badly about that. But you can't see the consequences to your action and you're not sure how to respond. And so it's very hard to understand the science. And especially there's a lot of misinformation out there. There's a lot of different answers. The, the, it seems to be changing all the time. And that's just unfortunately the nature of science. And 
And so this is a hard thing for people to understand. And I think that's one of the reasons that we wanted to do this game jam is to give people a sense of how they could understand the science and how they could see their role in this. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think not just, you know, LabX, but the rest of the organizers realize that games have this unique opportunity to contribute, you know, in, in a beneficial way towards, you know, fighting the pandemic, because as you were mentioning, Anne, you know, games can help connect our individual actions to this larger scale impact in a way that real life doesn't and, you know, help translate data into engaging stories, uh, you know, and, and all doing so in a package that's incredibly you know, engaging and fun. So I, I think we're all sort of bound by that mission. And it was clear based on the number of participants and games that were submitted that we weren't alone in thinking about mm -hmm. this, you know, games in this way. Um, so, you know, jumping into Jamming the Curve specifically, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, it was a, a two week uh, slow jam that took place in September. It was entirely virtual, obviously due to the pandemic uh, which actually gave us an opportunity to recruit designers from across the globe, which we were really, really excited about. And um, we had over 400 participants uh, join the jam and over 50 games submitted. So I wanted to just spend a you know, minute or two sharing with you some of the diversity of games that were submitted. So uh, I believe we have a short video prepared. If Joe, do you want to roll our video, please? So I, I hope you enjoyed that. You know, that was meant to be just sort of a little teaser of, you know, what was produced during this game jam. I think that was maybe six games and we had over 50 submitted. So I encourage you to, you know, go onto the itch page and look at the incredible diversity of games that did come out of it. And so as you saw, uh, Anne is no longer uh, with us here. She'll be back in a couple minutes to uh, announce some of the awards. But I wanted to spend just a few minutes more talking about um, you know, how we structured Jamming the Curve for those of you who aren't familiar with it. So obviously given the high stakes of the topic around COVID-19 and the amount of misinformation around the pandemic, we really needed to make sure that we were doing this right when it came to creating these games. And while, you know, us within the LabX team didn't necessarily have the expertise we needed, uh, we were able to recruit experts from in and around the National Academies uh, to sort of answer the call and make sure that we were creating these games in a responsible way. So we were able to recruit, you know, not just public health experts who were maybe actively involved in the COVID response, but people in the science communication and risk perception expertise, you know, just folks who, you know, know how to communicate science in a manner that is not only clear, but gets the points across and helps to dispel misinformation. And we were amazed to see the incredible array of experts that answered this call. You know, these were all volunteers who willingly gave their time because they thought this was a meaningful uh, project to be involved in. And I think we have a you know, short list that you will be seeing soon to just give you a sense that, you know, it, this, these weren't just doctors, these weren't just scientists, but we had folks from sort of the whole spectrum of topics related to, um, 
you know, aspects that would help our jammers with the pandemic. And I should mention as well that we wanted to make sure these games obviously weren't just scientific, but were fun, as I mentioned. So our, you know, partners, Indiecade and Seattle Indies, uh, Georgia Tech, they also really helped us recruit gaming experts. So we were able to have folks not only advise about the science, but make sure like, oh, this game would be more fun or less confusing if you did X, Y, or Z. So we were very grateful to, to have those you know, two combinations there. So how it worked is these mentors and experts not only created videos to provide inspiration and guidance for our jammers, but were actually present during the jam itself to answer questions and play test the games. So thank you to all of the mentors and experts who gave you, uh, you've volunteered your time. On top of that, we also had a separate group of public health and gaming experts that served as our judges to you know, evaluate the games that were created. And the games were judged on a number of different criteria, including uh, their audio and visual, uh, you know, what sort of COVID content was in it, and then their gameplay. You know, was it accessible? Was it fun? What audience was it intended for? And to make sure we did this right, the, the folks at LabX, uh, we consulted with uh, game jam experts from the Center for Disease Control. So we were able to come up with a rubric that we thought did a good job of assessing the games on each of these different metrics. And I'm honored to say that we actually have two of these judges here with us to, to join us in the stream. Um, I want to welcome uh, Lindsay and Carla, who are, will be able to chat very briefly about you know, what the, the jam uh, judging experience was for the jam and you know, sort of just share their, their thoughts and feedback. So welcome, can you guys hear me okay? We can hear you great, thank you. Perfect. Well, so um, I think you guys can do your introductions better than I can. So if you want to just briefly say, you know, who you are, uh, Carla, do you want to start? Sure. Um, my name is Carla Alvarado. I have a PhD in public health, uh, focusing in policy. I used to work in a local health department and was actually activated due to the H1N1 pandemic response. And so when I had the ability to be a judge um, for LabEx, it was just great um, because it brought back all those great memories, um, hardworking memories. But uh, yeah, it's great to be here and thank you for having me. Great, uh, thanks for having me. My name is Lindsay Grace. Uh, I'm the Knight Chair in Interactive Media at the University of Miami and the Vice President of the Higher Education Video Games Alliance. Uh, I used to uh, help run the Global Game Jam and I've been jamming for years and been teaching game design for about 17. Awesome. Well, you know, thank you both for joining us. And, you know, the idea was to bring in judges that could speak not just to the COVID side, but the gaming side, which Carla and Lindsay could obviously do, uh, I think, better than anyone. So, you know, at the beginning of the stream, I mentioned briefly why LabX thought games would be a good avenue to be approaching the pandemic. But I just wanted to get your perspective, both on, you know, if there's anything in particular that you think lends this approach well to COVID, and then also just what made you guys get involved? Because you know this was not easy. You had you had to invest a decent amount of your time, and we're very grateful. So, uh, Carla, do you want to take that first? Sure. Um, I just, you know, I had never quite realized it, um, but games are just another way of conveying information. It's just one of the ways that we can ingest as humans. That is entertaining. That is kinetic. That is you know, it engages your senses. And so that type of learning, experiential learning helps retain a lot of the concepts. And so that's what's helpful. And I just think, um, you know, sometimes public health concepts can be a little dry. And so just like you mentioned, um, the games package that information in a, it's bite-sized, it's digestible, and it's palatable. Um, and so it's kind of, you know, it's not even putting sugar on medicine. It's just someone <laughs> ingesting this very passively and in, um, in an entertaining way, which is, you know, a hard thing to do. Absolutely. Great. 
So I think I would just add to that. Um, so I've actually uh, written a book on social impact games, and I think the social impact uh, propensity for games is really quite incredible, particularly because we have opportunities to do things like encourage people to understand uh, new perspectives and also to change the way that they're thinking through games. I think that's one of the huge opportunities here. So if we can inspire people to have healthier habits or to um, engage with a topic from a different perspective, I think we can actually increase their um, the ability to sort of act and act appropriately. So so uh, I think generally this is why I strongly believe in, and try to engage in the community of say games for change, but also indie games. I think it's really important to notice that we are having indie gamers do this work because they're offering a very new spice. Um, no offense to the large organizations that might also try to do this work, but their uh, approach to game design uh, may not be as refreshing as some of the work that we see here in the collection. Absolutely. And, and I, I think one of the things that I noticed that was a really benef you know, beneficial to working with these jammers, these indie developers, is that I think they were just so excited to be contributing meaningfully to the pandemic. You know, I think it's been hard where often the case, the best thing we can be doing to fight COVID is nothing. You know, stay inside, don't, don't do much. But this was sort of a tangible step people could take. And as Lindsay, Lindsay, as you were saying, you know, harness that sort of special spice that you know maybe only an indie develop, developer could provide. So, I that that was really cool, sort of seeing unfold during the jam. And so, I, I mean, I'm curious because this is LabX's first game jam, but you know, from the judging perspective, you know, while you were going through the games, playing them, I wanted to just sort of learn, you know, how is this different than other game jams? Maybe you've participated in the past, Lindsay? I, I, Carla, I'm not sure if you've done one, but uh, Lindsay, I'm sure you've been part of other jams. So I, I would love to just get your perspective on how this compared the process, the topic, all that. Sure. So uh, I think one of the things that's really nice about having such a focused topic, uh, typically in a lot of game jams, and I've, I've also, uh, I guess I've done a lot of stuff in game jams, uh, we run an annual conference on organizing game jams and helping people understand how to do them more effectively. And there are a lot of uh, sort of like uh, check marks that, that this particular one was structured well. The high degree of focus on a very single topic helped, as did, I was really impressed with the breadth and variety. Um, I think structurally it was really smart and it made it much easier to... Um, to, to judge that there were these sort of often couplings uh, of scientist and uh, designer. So we were respecting both fields and recognizing how they intertwine instead of what sometimes happens in the game community, which is that you are asked to do something for someone. It's like, here, I have this problem, fix it with a pack of games. Uh, this was much more uh, cohesive. I think that was really great. And also on the judging side, I have to applaud how well organized it was. It was very easy to just focus on the work and not worry about the operations of actually executing on um, finding the game and then figuring out how to run it. There's, it was just very well organized. Yeah, well, and the, the LabX can, you know, we can take some credit, but it was mostly sort of just this amazing collaboration with Indicate and Se Seattle Indies. I think the fact that we were able to bring in folks from these different disciplines and, you know, make sure that we'd sort of checked all those boxes. So I'm, I'm glad to hear from your perspective and, you know, offline, it'll be great to, you know, get any constructive feedback. So sure. that, that sounds great. Um, Carla, since the, I believe this was your first game jam, was there anything particularly surprising or that you realized, wait, I didn't sign up for this, like, how, you know, very, very different or was it, so, you know, met your expectations? Well, I, I just think um, one that thing that was just very surprising was as a judge, you know, there are, there were games that you just like, that you innately like and that you can go with and they engage you. But then, you know, to, to Lindsay's point about being very structured and the criteria being very clear and forward, when you had to sometimes compare the criteria to the game or rather contrast it. And sometimes you, I liked a game very much, but it didn't quite stick to the criteria and then you know, sometimes there were uh, features in the game that you would have wanted to applaud or to commend, but the, the criteria didn't quite capture that. And so it was in a way difficult to manage, you know, conceptually, intellectually, how you wanted to rate the games, um, again, because they were so rich and, and the criteria, you know, it, it has to give structure, but it can't suffocate. And so it was just, um, it was a great experience in, in exercising that muscle of having to, <laughs> to know, to assign value to things that are quite intangible. So I thought it was great, but 
to echo Lindsay, it was a great setup. And, you know, if we're known for anything at the academies is because we're structured um, <laughs> and, and because we're efficient. So um, I was, it was great to see that in action in LabEx. So thank you. Yeah, well, I mean, thank you. You know, you clearly, I, I didn't envy your guys' position to try and sort through just, as you mentioned, the incredible diversity, but high caliber games. So I'm glad it was you guys and not me who was trying to do that. Um, maybe just we, we can end this interview. If you do you have any, you know, big picture takeaways or, you know, I think a lot of the jammers are watching this stream. Uh, anything you'd want to tell the folks who created games or maybe interested in making games in the future? Uh, Lindsay, do you want to say anything? Absolutely. I, I just, I, I actually want to applaud the effort regardless uh, because it's really a tough time to sit down and decide to focus on the thing that's making it a tough time uh, and continue to make games. And I have to remind people, because uh, I think it's often easy to forget this, that for everyone who actually committed to this effort, there's probably 10 people who said they were going to do it, didn't get around to it, thought about it, got distracted. I mean, I think this is a sort of year of a lot of that. I'm going to sit down and learn Mandarin Chinese, but I'm never going to open the book. So it's really impressive that folks had followed through. And I was I really just, I, I think they, they, I mean, if there were versions of round, round of applause right now, they deserve one for the amount of commitment and um, the follow through in particular, which is often a problem with game jams. And I, the number of submissions alone really gave me that impression that people had really said, I'm going to do this and I'm going to finish it, which is great. Absolutely. Uh, Carla, any, anything you want to add to that or? Well, I, I just wanted to uh, put it out there that, you know, in terms of public health and uh, health promotion, health behavior, there is this kind of right setting for uh, public health uh, practitioners who deal more on the chronic disease side instead of the more communicable disease side to consider games, you know, um, as a means for uh, health education, um, because again, it's just a much more uh, enlivening and entertaining mode of absorbing this information than it is to maybe go to a class and see a bunch of PowerPoint presentations to manage diabetes or cardiovascular disease. So I just wanted to, to end with that and commend you all for, you know, jamming the curb in, in a way encapsulated the sentiment that public health professionals want to put out that, that it's physical distance does not mean social distance. And so the fact that you were able to put this together completely virtual and have people across the globe collaborating, you know, that's, that's what we hope to see in public health. Yeah, could, couldn't agree more. And I actually had several of our, you know, public health judges say something very similar. So I think that it, it, it is a common sentiment and you know, we we're just honored that so many people were willing to get involved. So uh, on that note, you know, I wanna thank both of you so much for joining not only the stream, but the, the jam. And you know, I, I hope we get to work together you know, again in the future. And you know, obviously stay tuned for the, the rest of the stream and uh, hope to see you guys soon. Great, thank you. All right. So um, I hope everyone enjoyed that uh, interview. I, I always love getting to chat with Lindsay and Carla. And as you can see, uh, Anne is now back they in. They were awesome. <laughs> they were awesome. I, you know, it always takes a village to do things like this. And, and I just have to say, when they talk about a round of applause, a round of applause to them and all the judges. Um, and, and a round of applause to you, Rick, because, you know, when they talk about um, the structure that was part of this, I know how hard you and your collaborators worked on this behind the scenes. And, um, and I know that when you talk about this being a creative engagement program at the Academy, we're still part of the Academy. We know our structure. Yeah, so, exactly. To, to, to echo you. Carla's, uh, Carla's point. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and I mean, it's, this is by far the, I've been looking forward to this day for quite a while because it is the culmination of all of the hard work, both on the designers parts and the organizers. Yep. So it's, it's just a lot of fun. Yep. And we actually now I think get to the most exciting part of the stream, yes. which is the, the, uh, you know, handing out of the awards. Yeah. So just to let everybody know how this will work out is that the, the judges were able to, um, pick the top 15 games out of, you know, the 50 plus that were submitted. And this, you know, was clearly not easy, 
But these 15 games are divided into five different categories, of which you'll see. And each category, you know, we, we would have loved to give all 15 of these games prizes, uh, but we will, you know, spend a few moments talking about each game and then uh, every category will have a winner. And, and hopefully if, if the tech works out, we will have some jammers join us, you know, on the stream to accept the award. So the, how the prizes will work is that the, the top winning team will win a thousand dollar cash prize, as well as have the opportunity to compete for a larger game development grant. Um, you know, a lot of these games, you know, are on various degrees of sort of polished, you know, they only had two weeks while trying to live amidst a pandemic. So it's amazing they did, you know, anything at all, but we really wanted to make sure that with this grant, they then have time to, you know, the, basically every team had a wish list of things like, oh, if I had more time, I would have included this aspect of the model. Like, oh, like I could have this, you know, component of the audience. So we basically wanted to make sure that they had that time. So um, I think without further ado, Anne, are you ready? I, I think so, as ready as I'll ever be. <laughs> Perfect. Well, so our, our first category of games that we were awarding are games uh, that have classical or classic mechanics. And these were ones that, you know, reminded us and the judges of, you know, essentially an, an arcade game. They would use relatively simple and familiar gameplay, but in a way that engaged folks around COVID, which I thought was, you know, a really cool way to, to take this tried and true uh, method into this format. And so our, our first game that we want to highlight is a game called Smash the Curve. And, you know, what appealed to, to us about this is that, you know, given the amount of fatigue and information overload during the pandemic, Smash the Curve was sort of a very uh, fresh and fun way to interact with real-time COVID data, of actually from more than 100 countries. I had to check that when I saw that, but it, yeah, it's true. They had over 100 country's real-time data, which I thought was amazing. Yeah, that is pretty amazing. And we also found the game to be very approachable um, with its use of the Brick Smash gameplay. Um, and it was, uh, there was great education um, of audiences about the true infection rates that were being experienced in all those hundred countries around the world. So we thought that was a really nice aspect of it as well. Yeah, actually, while I was waiting for the stream to start, I was playing it because it's something <laughs> that you could just, you know, lo uh, load into your browser and just get a couple games in. So you're I, addicted. You know, I, I am addicted. It's a little <laughs> bit of a problem. But, uh, you know, thankfully, it's Friday and I have all weekend. You're infected. Uh, <laughs> it's something I don't want someone to tell me. But I think in this case, you might be right. Um, so you know, congratulations, Smash the Curve. Uh, the judges loved your game and, you know, we're grateful that you submitted it. So thank you so much for that. Um, we have a second game that is an honorable mention for the classic mechanics category, and that is Mask Kid. So Mask Kid lets you, you play as this hero and face everyday quarantine challenges through a series of uh, mini games in rapid succession. Uh, if anyone's ever played WarioWare, it struck me as uh, sort of in that style, but with a lot of really cool retro art. Yep, yep. Um, and we liked it because it, it was really easy gameplay. It was very, very accessible. Um, and this one was really addictive and entertaining as well. And of course, we really looked for entertaining as much as anything else in these games. Yeah, I, I think the fact that you could, you know, play as Mask Kid, you sort of felt like you were donning your cape yeah. and your mask to, yeah. to help cope. You yes, know, the superhero. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that's another one that I really enjoyed playing just in the few minutes between, you know, waiting for meetings yep. and things like that. So Mask Kid, congratulations and thank you so much for your contribution. Um, so we are actually going to announce our first thousand dollar prize winner for the category of games with classic mechanics. And I'm happy to announce that the winner is Everyday Hero. Excellent. Yeah, so Everyday Hero is a, a casual game where players need to stop the spread of COVID by conducting several, uh, you know, pro-social measures such as, you know, making sure you keep social distance, putting masks on, and doing so, uh, you know, with these fun and interesting characters as they show up on screen. Yep. And, and the game reflects the level of urgency that's required in a pandemic. And it seems to be a simple, but a really fun way to communicate the message to the audience. And so that really for us was a big deal. And so Absolutely. 
So do you have an award? I do. So I think everyone, uh, I'd like to welcome Ming to the stream. Yep. Hey, Ming. Hey. Yep. Hi, everyone. Yep. Please welcome Ming and for our award in Classic Mechanics. And I think you have a very special prize. Oh, thank oh, you. This, this is uh, arguably uh -huh. the most valuable trophy anyone will receive this year. We wanted to make sure uh, to hand something commemorative to Ming and, you know, your team with Everyday Hero to be... Um, you know, just to commemorate all your hard work. So I would like to pass it along to you here. Yeah, I got this. Oh, oh sorry. It's so it disappears. I know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But okay. you know what doesn't disappear? You have a $1,000 very special gift. And oh. you might think that that means I have like a five-year-old in my house making this, but no, this is what seven months of isolation does. I've made oh. this $1,000 gift for you by very own oh, self. Oh, great. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, yeah. thanks, uh, Indy Cave. Thanks, Jamie the Curve. <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe just in a sentence or two, do you want to say why you got involved with this game jam? Yeah, um, actually, we're a team from China. So uh, I think China and the US are fighting through uh, the corona, corona 19 uh, uh, very hard. So uh, I think maybe we can use our experience from uh, what we have done before and to help the people around us and uh, maybe all over the world to remember such simple rules uh, like keeping the social distance and uh, wearing masks maybe and uh, sanitize your hands and uh, to be an everyday hero for, to stop the spread. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> well, I, I would yeah. say that you and your team were the everyday heroes for making this game. So thank you so much again for your contribution. And, you know, we'll be in touch, uh, you know, after the stream to, to talk about next steps. But thank you again. And thanks so much for joining us uh, for this award ceremony. Yeah, thank you. Okay, take care, okay. Ming. Yeah, bye. I, I had um, kind of jealous that you're the one who gets to hold up the, the cash prize, Anne, but then again, you did the hard work of making the- Yeah, you know, the, I counterfeited some thousand dollar bills. So, you know, I get to do that. <laughs> the, the, this is recorded. So I hope that, uh, you know, doesn't get sent to the IRS or, or anyone who well, would you be know, concerned. The academies has a whole bunch of reports on counterfeit deterrence. So I read those reports and found out how to get around all of those uh, deterrence mechanisms. So now the treasury will be after me. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Well, as long as it's you and not me, that sounds great. <laughs> So, right, so I guess we're on to our, our next category, which is in simulation games, correct? Yep. All right. So these games give players an opportunity to zoom out um, and experiment with what happens when we make different policy level decisions on a more macro scale. Um, and whether that's for a business or a city or a country or even a planet, it's a sort of zoom in, zoom out. And given the scale and the magnitude of COVID, we thought that this was very relevant. And this was a very uh, popular approach for the gamers who entered the jam and was reflected in the very large number of submissions that we got that was focused on this kind of simulation. So, okay, Joe, I guess that we have to go to our first honorable mention for this category, and it's the Corona Festival Organizer. And the Corona, Corona yes, okay, that's right, we have to do this, snap, snap. The Corona Festival Organizer is a simulation strategy prototype game in which the player has to plan, build, and manage their own music festival during the Corona, during the COVID-19 pandemic, which I thought was interesting. Talk about a large gathering. Yeah, it, and it was interesting because, you know, at the beginning, you could decide basically on what decisions you make in this festival, you know, that would influence obviously the attendees, the number of attendees, and then yep. what the risk of getting infected was. Yep. And I, th I think the thing that I enjoyed the most, and a number of the judges commented on this as well, is that you really had to think about things that are really easy to overlook, you know, keeping the bathroom stocked and making sure the food services are, you know, clean in the food tent. So I think this was not only a really cool behind the scenes peek of anyone who does, you know, event organizing, but, yep. you know, really, really relevant and it was a fun way to do it. So uh, congratulations to Corona Festival organizers. Yep. And our second honorable mention goes to Outbreak. Um, and that's a turn-based strategy game that places the player in a leadership position of a nation that is undergoing a global pandemic. 
and, and I think this game was actually one of the more challenging ones, but it was good because it had a lot of replayability value. So, you know, you had to make very limited policy decisions. You could only do, you know, one thing at a time. Mm -hmm. And it made me really want to go back and like, oh, uh, what happened if I hadn't, you know, locked down the country and, or what if I did do a national mask mandate or whatnot? Yep. So this one was one that I really enjoyed coming back to again and again, and several of the judges felt the same way. Yeah. And, and so of course now we turn to our winner and I really love the name of this one, Panda Manager. I just think that that's an awesome name. Um, and this of course is a simulation game where you're the mayor whose job it is to slow the spread of a new disease by managing your citizens, making sure that they get tested, putting them in quarantine if that's what you think is the best option for your citizens, um, that you decide what the right policies are to prevent the spread of the virus, that you basically have to take control and you have to do the best job that you can on behalf of everybody in your, in your, in your town so this was a this was a great game and highly deserving of the award absolutely and here i think to accept the award we have lucas lucas can you hear us uh, i can hear you hello pleasure to all be right here. hey we're excited to to have you here um i'm very honored to be handing <laughs> out a you know four-fifths full bottle of hand sanitizer as our trophy. I hope you can well, accept it here. That is so and, amazing. And we Thank have you. a bespoke, a bespoke check for you featuring small barnyard animals. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> well, it'll be the, the, the most colorful, exciting check any of us will ever see this year, I feel like. So. <laughs> That's right. Your panda manager, I hope knows how to deal with uh, roosters and pigs. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, real quick, Lucas, maybe just in you know one or two sentences, could you maybe tell us what, what was the most difficult part about designing the game during this game jam for you? Um, the most difficult part to us was uh, making a game that was like, it's a very complicated topic and one that people usually don't want to put up with. So it was difficult to make it realistic and yet really fun for the player to play. Uh, so finding sort of that small balance between not making it too realistic so the player doesn't enjoy it anymore and so you can still like grasp what the what he has to do in the game but at the same time uh, make it realistic that was a major issue for us yeah clearly it was a, a fine balance but the judges clearly thought you guys did an amazing job with it so congratulations again and you know thank you for your contribution and for joining us thank you so much all right, we'll talk to you soon, Lucas. Take care. Okay. See ya. All right. So that that was the the simulation games, and you know, obviously, while we we did want to award games that sort of zoomed out and let you manipulate these you know large scale factors, uh, the judges were also really invested in games that zoomed in very personally. So you know, obviously, the pandemic has affected all of us individually, and so we wanted to award games that took on. Uh, you know, one's in a compelling, you know, sort of protagonist, whether first person or third person, but just really let us, you know, feel what the characters were feeling and, and learn from them. So our, our first game in the honorable mention category for, you know, games with a compelling protagonist is Together. So Together is an interactive narrative that juxtaposes uh, two people's experiences during the pandemic with the goal of, you know, really emphasizing just how important the regulations are that keep all of us safe. Yeah, and, and we really found the storyline compelling and the contrast between the different experiences was genuinely moving. Yeah, they, they would have, uh, you know, someone walking and then someone, you know, reading messages as they came in. So you, you, you had to divide your time on, you know, what you were focusing on. And it almost felt like as information was flooding you, it, it did remind me of like, you know, back in the early days of the pandemic where you're just not sure what information is coming in and what all of it means. So we, you know, we all thought together did a great job at that. Mm -hmm. um, moving on to our second game, our, our second honorable mention in this category is non-essential. So non-essential is an offbeat comedic drama of all things um, about mental health, you know, human connection, and just what does it mean to be living during a pandemic? Yeah, and the concept of speaking with someone who has lost their job during a crisis, uh, we found really to be very compelling. The voice acting was especially well done. Absolutely. So thank you so much, Non-Essential. And it is my honor to announce the winner of the 
uh, third category of games. This is Lab Hero. Woo! Woo! So exactly. Yeah. So Lab Hero is a, a 2D arcade style management game where you actually get to play as a first responder named Emma. She's working hard to find a vaccine while simultaneously trying to follow proper health protocols while doing other tasks in, you know, in the hospital. Yeah, and the game created a really good feel for how challenging and complex it can be for workers who have to meet the multiple demands of a pandemic. And so we want to welcome Stephen to receive the award for the compelling protagonist. So congratulations, Stephen. And I think this time I have the hand sanitizer. So Rick, you need to catch it okay. and then hand uh, it over. You ready? I, I think I'm ready. Okay, go. All right, I see it, I see it, I see it. Whoa. Oh, and there we go. It See, we're trying to be very, tricky. Yeah, exactly. It travels incredibly fast. Steven, I'm glad you caught that. Yep, I did. <laughs> All right, and, then, and, and, and do we have a check? There we, we go. We do have a check, and this one has little ponies on it, and oh. um, and I believe it says compete and perform. So yeah, yeah. we're good. Yeah, I, I think you not only did you compete, it, but you, know, you compete, but your, your team performed very well as well. Exactly. So very appropriate. Thank you. Um, Steven, what was the thing you're most proud of for your game? Um, well, to be very honest with you, so it was only two of us. Uh, like it was mainly two of us. It was me and my friend in Norway. And the fact that we had to work uh, over, you know, seas and we had to, you know, manage the time. And the fact that we knew about the jam two weeks before, but since we had another submission, we only started working in the second week. So within the time span of like four, five days, we really had to, you know, push it through and make sure like everything was polished and it was like playable and, you know, the whole game was, you know, like the idea was conveyed. So I guess I'm really happy about that. We managed to pull it off and we conveyed the idea. So, yeah. That's amazing. And yeah, the two of you should be incredibly proud of your accomplishment. And, we're, you know, we're excited to, uh, hopefully work with you moving forward. Yep. So thank you so much for the contribution and for joining thank us you. on the stream. Yeah, you too. Thank you. All right. Take care, Stephen. Yeah. Bye-bye. Okay. So I think we are on to our fourth category, and that's games with crowd management. And this category features games that invite the players to manage crowds and control characters to minimize the spread of the virus. This was also another very popular game mechanic in the jam. Um, and our judges thought that these games did an exceptionally good job overall in the categories that we were looking for. Um, and so our first honorable mention in this category is called Stay Safe. Um, and Stay Safe is a tile-based puzzle game where you have to maneuver citizens around to maximize the social distancing and to minimize the number of cases. Yeah, and this game was great because it was incredibly simple, but incredibly mm -hmm. challenging. So I don't know if I personally got beyond the second level or so, <laughs> but the, the judges loved the music and just sort of the concept of trying to manage the infection with very limited resources mm -hmm. was something that resonated with them. So great job, stay safe. Yep. Um, and the second honorable mention in this category is Flock Down. Uh, Flock Down expresses the conundrum of keeping businesses open to maintain the bird economy uh, that's at risk of being of spreading the infection in this um, uh, grid-based puzzle game that encourages you encourages you to direct the safe movement of the avian healthcare workers and its citizens. And, and Flockdown also has the honor of, I think it had the most mentions of addictive in the description. Okay. So, you know, I'm excited for people to, you know, play through it uh, in the future. Cool. Um, and the, sorry, did I interrupt you? No, I think, Anne, go ahead and introduce our uh, winner for this category. Okay, yeah, because the winner in this category um, is Cat Colony Crisis. Um, and so we would like to bring on um, our winner. And I think we have uh, Chris, who is here to accept the award and welcome. Hello, thank you for having me. Hey, Chris. No, thank you for joining us. Uh, yeah. Just a, a quick comment about your game. You know, the judges thought that Cat Colony Crisis did an uh, amazing job basically dealing with the ambiguity of symptoms. You know, is someone coughing? 
because they have COVID or, you know, they clear in their throat, you know, like it's not never clear cut and the judges thought you did a great job with it. So it was a fun game. I, I personally <laughs> liked it a lot. Thank you. Yeah, and the, the have, artwork was amazing. <laughs> and we have, um, I did not have any cats, but I do have a number of insects. That's, that's perfectly fine with me. <laughs> Perfect. Well, and then, um, Chris, I hope you're able to accept the award oh. that I'm just passing through. See if it comes yeah. in. Oh, it, there it you shrunk go. a little bit, but I, I got it's it. Purr. It's purr. There you go. <laughs> what happens when you go through the internet, I guess. Yeah, it's, it's cat sized. So that's, yeah. you know, appropriate. Yeah. Um, so Chris, uh, just, you know, in a sentence or two, you know, what made you and your team get involved? Because I think there were several of you involved with Cat Colony. Is that correct? Yeah, th there was four of us. Uh, it's just an issue that uh, is just, I mean, it's close to our hearts. We're, we're a team that really believes in science and, you know, the importance of, uh, you know, video games and their ability to teach people about uh, different subjects. So as soon as we saw the jam, we were like immediately on board. So that, that's really about it. Great. All right. Well, you know, we, we are lucky to, to have you and your team and, you know, look forward to seeing, you know, how Cat Colony Crisis develops moving forward. So thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you. Meow. All right. Take, Meow. <laughs> take care. Yeah, I, I wish I had a cat where I was currently staying. I feel like that would have been the perfect. I know, because you're a cat sitter. I am a cat sitter. Yes. Uh, uh, pride and joy. Happy to do it. So. Uh, believe it or not, we're actually on to our last category yes. of the award ceremony. And this is for games that you know, feature what we might call pro-social pandemic behaviors. So, you know, whether it's wearing a mask, social distancing, or even helping out members of your community during a crisis, each of these games made that a core component of their mechanic. And the judges, you know, thought they did an amazing job. So our, our first one, getting an honorable mention for this category, is Reaching Out. Reaching Out is a game where you safely try to help out your neighbors, not only to you know, make sure they're doing okay, but also just to stay connected during this challenging time. Yeah, it has a really good interaction system, good focus on the community. It provides really good examples of what you can do to safely help your community. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, and there's some good tips. I wish I had had that back during the mm -hmm. start of pandemic. Like, oh, yep. I should have gone, gone in and you know, make sure my neighbors were okay. Yes. Right. So uh, congratulations reaching out. Our, our second honorable mention for this category is the COVID Express. <laughs> the COVID Express is a lighthearted game set in the London underground where passengers randomly choose seats and the user has the difficult task of making sure that all social guidelines, social distance guidelines are followed in the tunnel. Yeah, and we know how, how challenging that is. And so this game acts, use, asks users to reflect on this difficult task to have them be compliant when they don't wanna be. Yeah, and you know, clearly that's a stressful challenge, but because the artwork was so lighthearted and cute, I think the developer did a great job of balancing those, those issues there. So COVID Express, great job. It was a lot of fun to play. So our final winner and the winner of the uh, fifth category is Outbreak in Space. Uh, in Outbreak in Space, you have the challenge to save your friends and family from a sp spreading epidemic in an alien world. Yeah, and this game won because it was just so engaging and would be a great tool to teach in high school or college to get the students to understand the principles, the basic principles of epidemiology. So I think we are now joined, yes we are, uh, by Patrice who's going to receive the award for Outbreak in Space. Welcome Patrice. Thank you so much for having me. It's a complete honor for me and my team. Uh, we had uh, three uh, countries represented on the team, so it was fantastic. It's great. That's, that's amazing. Well, I hope you know all your teammates uh, accept this. You know, on <laughs> behalf of their contribution, it crosses international borders clearly. So, of course. And, and we have a special um, monkey uh, check for you. Many little monkeys and a random dog. <laughs> oh my god, yes. This is great if everyone, uh, if you play through, there's an overlord character who may or may not be a dog, so okay. very appropriate. There, there we go. <laughs> That's amazing. And and Patrice, I imagine having, you know, people from many different countries working simultaneously, did that present challenges with, you know, timing and communication? Or were you guys, you know, like a well-oiled machine? What was your experience? 
I think it was really fantastic in general. Um, in some ways, it was almost a boon um, because, uh, you know, sometimes there's like uh, git issues, uh, uh, conflicts and things like that. So I think it worked out fairly well. Um, there was basically like one time in the day where we were all awake. So it was a little challenging getting together for coordination meetings, but uh, we did a fantastic job. So, so shout out to Juan and Punch and Christopher. Um, Y'all are awesome and uh, we did it. You, you guys did it, yeah. And uh, you know, just once again, the judges loved your game. So amazing job and you know, look forward to next steps uh, with Outbreak in Space. Exactly. Absolutely, thank you so much. And thank you all to right. the judges and all of the mentors and the entire planning committee. Thank you. It's our pleasure. Thanks so much, Patrice. Thank you. All right, take care. That wow. Was great. That, that was am. amazing. I feel like, have you ever spent $5,000 that fast, Anne, and for such a good cause? You know, this, this is like the best counterfeiting I've ever done. I'm super excited about it. And I just feel like now I got to go make some more money and we got to spend it, Rick. All right. Yeah, well, I'm <laughs> I'm on board, so let's make it happen. Let's make and it happen. If, if we don't send those, you know, physically to our developers, then you should have them on a plaque somewhere <laughs> where you can always point to them. So That's exactly right. This was yeah. great. And and I do think that, um, you know, there have been so many wonderful games and, and, and I think that we can only expect, you know, great things going forward. And we're grateful to our partners for helping this um, happen as well. Absolutely. And uh, you know, one of those partners is going to be uh, coming on right now. I'd like to yes. introduce Tim Collings from Seattle Indies. And, you know, thank you so much for tuning in. Tim's going to have a couple announcements and we will pass it on to him right now. Yes. Hi. Uh, yeah, thanks, everyone. Uh, it's been quite an amazing jam. Uh, thanks for joining us for the awards. Uh, couldn't have done this without all the developers, mentors, organizers, all the different groups that came together to make this a possibility. Uh, this has been one of the most challenging and also successful jams that we've ever really hosted, I think, uh, as a part of this huge group that all came together to make this something special. Um, we had a group of developers from all over the world, uh, award winners from Germany, uh, the US, Canada, the Philippines, China, the UK. Uh, it was just an amazing representation of what people can do from when they come together from all over the world to work on uh, games together to help promote you know, a social cause that's important to people all over the world as we're all experiencing this time together. And I'm really proud of what we accomplished and what all of us came together to do here it was really something special and i hope we get to do something again like this soon but you know hopefully on a more on a different topic that maybe is not so uh hard for all of us to deal with i guess um so yeah congrats everybody thanks uh up next we're gonna have the they're gonna have the indicated award show so hopefully uh you'll stick around and watch that and see who are the uh winners from the great indicate festival that hopefully you've all been participating in and taking part in <clears throat> over this past couple of weeks. It's been really uh, exciting and informative and I hope you've enjoyed it. And I think Stephanie might be joining us uh, next to uh, take us note. I'm back and I just want to come in and give a gigantic thank you to our partners um, at Games for the Future, at LabX, and then at the National Academy of Sciences and all of my colleagues at Indicate, as well as everybody else who, ha who have participated and, and been part of the jam. It is such a privilege to be part of collaborating on something that is right at the crux of creativity, science, medical, and everything that's happening right now. It is really challenging time to do anything like this. And we could not have done it without this incredible team that's organized it, uh, who Tim acknowledged in more depth. 
and the amazing creators, not just the creators who won, but all the creators who participated. This was not an easy jam in any way to be a part of. So it's my pleasure just to celebrate and acknowledge and congratulate everybody to thank you all for being a part of it and to make sure that you stay tuned in so you know who actually finishes and creates and receives the large uh, $20,000 uh, develop, cash development grant from LabX. Because the wonderful thing is that we're not just stopping here, we're moving forward to continue to make an impact and reach out. So make sure to check out our website to play all of these incredible games. All of the games are in itch.io and available, and the winners are also on the website. So thank you all, and we look forward to actually jamming the curve.